What's going on YouTube? It's Fine OK, and today I'm bringing you guys the top five viable assassins in the solo lane. I get a lot of questions in my stream and stuff like that on what assassin I think are viable in solo and what I like to play, uh, because I think it's a pretty popular topic, and uh, playing assassin in solo lane is actually really fun. I like thinking back to the old Cyclone Spin days when he was carrying from solo lane with whatever pick he really wanted, especially like assassins. Um, so, I'm going to be making a video on that since it seems like a popular topic. Uh, so, let's just get right into it. I'm going to have Ratatasker at number five. Basically, I'm going to talk about the build, their play style, and their strengths right now. Uh, why I think they're in the top five and stuff like that. Um, something you'll notice, though, is that most of these viable assassins do have sustain in their kit. It's going to need sustain for them to actually be able to compete in the solo lane. Um, so, yeah, keep that in mind. So, we're going to have Ratatasker at number five. Red Tasker has always been viable in solo, uh, even with his old kit, which I do miss. Uh, but with this new kit as well, he has the good base damage. Uh, he has the prot shred on his two, so if he builds tanky, he still do a good amount of damage. He has the rotational ability with his uh, semi-global ult. Um, he has the power plays in lane because he can buy the acorn and have extra physical power enemy over the enemy solo laner. He has the safety because he always has his ult, so if he's proxying and he ever gets ganked, he's never really going to die. So he has a lot going for him in solo, so that's why I think he's in the top five. Um, his build is going to be a little bit different, obviously, because you can buy the acorn from lane and you can't buy boots. Um, so usually you just have your acorn here, and you can buy it in lane. Um, so you're just going to go Warrior's Blessing and, of course, Chalice, just like anybody else. Um, and then I like going Teleport on gods that have rotational ability, like Ratatasker, because then you can really double down on that rotation. Um, like, always be in lane, but also, you know, be able to, like, gank mid and put pressure elsewhere. Um, but you could not go TP. I think you can pretty much go whatever on him. It's just a playstyle choice. Um... And then we going into Acorn, of course. I guess we already have it up there, but I'll put it down here just for good measure. We'll have, but we'll be going into basically the full CDR build. I like going that on uh, Rat. So something to keep in mind is because this, this Genji's Breastplate build is going to be pretty consistent with the other gods, is that if they have healing, like a lot of healing sustain, then Pestilence is always an option and something that you probably need to go. Um, but we're on the buff Hide of the Urchin patch, and I was liking Hide of the Urchin before. Go Hide of the Urchin on Rat. You're going to be in a lot of fights and stuff like that. Um, and keep in mind that you're going to be building basically full tank, but you're still going to be doing lots of damage because you have full CDR. You're going to be ahead if you're playing it right, and you have uh, good base damage numbers. And then last item, you could kind of get away with whatever. Void Shield I really like on Rat Task here because you're two Prot Shreds. Um, so you're kind of just doubling down on the Prot Shred as well, so you're going to be doing lots of damage, basically true damage, uh, to their carries. Uh, if you two them and have your Void Shield up. Um, and then this would be the full build. You could also go Masamune here, but I just prefer Void Shield on Ratatasker specifically. There's also the situational items that you can always go. So if you want to go Thorn second uh, Relic, it's de definitely a playstyle thing. I don't think Thorns is necessary all the time, but if it's a playstyle thing and you like going it, then go Nemean maybe instead of Void Shield and just build full tank. Wing Blade is always an option if they have a lot of slows and you feel like it's a problem and you don't have Sprint. Um, and then there's the other items, like if they have multiple magical characters, uh, Bulwark's a nice item to have. And then, you know, the Situational Mantle Discord, uh, if you feel like you're kind of getting blown up in the middle of, uh, like, a large CC. So that would be the full build and the Situational items. Um, and the playstyle on him is just like every other assassin in solo, and basically every other character that's good in solo lane uh, as a front line, is that you're going to be diving the back line, uh, applying lots of pressure, trying to get as far ahead as possible by proxying, being annoying, trying to steal camps, uh, because you're going to be really hard to kill. So, that would be the full build, and that's right at Tasker at number 5. Coming in at number 4, I'm going to have Fenrir. Um, so Fenrir, I think, is really good in solo because he has the built-in sustain to his kit um, on his 2. He also gets physical power from that, so it's going to allow him to do lots of damage, even when building tanky. Um, he also has a lot, lots of CC, multiple stuns from his uh, jump. Well, if he hits multiple people with it. But it's also on a very short cooldown if he hits people with it. Um, it has it, and he's going to be building CDR on him anyway. So he just has a lot of CC, a lot of things going for him. Lots of, lots of kill potential in lane, especially with his ult if he drags people in the tower. Um, so yeah, that's why I think he's so good. And he's also, you know, he's just like a favorite character of mine. So if you're really good at Fender, um, I think you can get away with playing him in solo and do well with it. So build's going to be pretty much the same across all the assassins and all the warriors right now. It's just Warrior's Blessing, uh, Tier 1 Boots, and Chalice. You want to make sure you go Tier 1 Boots so that you can build Boots as soon as possible so you can get back to lane and not have a power play on yourself. So like if they have Boots over you and you don't have Boots, you're going to have to play back. They all have all the pressure and they could possibly kill you if you misstep. So um, I like going Teleport on Fenner, but I could see you not going. It's not that big of a deal. I think Meditation is actually pretty cool on uh, Fenner. Um, really keep that sustain up. Uh, always be full health. 
And if you're going to stay in lane for long periods of time, then you know meditation is definitely an option, but teleport is good as well. And if they have any slows or anything you have to worry about, then sprint is an option. But you already have a lot of escape in a CCME with your ult on like long duration, so you don't exactly need it. So obviously you're just going to be going boots, same build as before basically. Um, you could go a mystical mail build on Fender, but I feel like you run out of mana, mana pretty fast with that build, so I don't prefer to go that. Um, however, if you do go the mystical mail build, definitely go Genji, second item, unless they have uh, healing, which you need pestilence in that case. But uh, Genji's will help you cover that mana problem up. But I do prefer the full CDR build, just constant jumping on people and stuff like that. It's really nice. Um, so then I go hide the urchin. And this where mid guardian is basically a must buy every game. Um, and I like going Moss Mini last item on him, increases movement speed a little bit, and then late game you can sell this for the old Witch Blade, um, really lower their DPS by a lot with the aura on this. Um, and then you'll be at full CDR still, so don't worry about that. And you get a good amount of health in this build as well, I mean you're getting 100 here, 250 here, uh, plus if you get this stacked up you get the extra 200 health from the passive, the shield, um, and 350 health from this, and then 150 from here, and then 200 from here, so it adds up, and you're going to be at, look at that, 3065 health late game which is pretty nice when you have a CDR build usually you lack health when you go to CDR build um, but 3065 is pretty good for that um, so that would be the full build and then you know there's all those also the situational items like we've talked about before like wing blade Nemean um, if you have like thorns bulwark if they have lots of uh, magical damage a lot of magical carry stuff like that um, so yeah that would be the full build and the playstyle is just the same kind of be uh, it's going to be a little different, I guess, because you're not always going to be diving super hard because you do have the potential to ult one of their tanks and kind of just set up for your carries to instant kill them, uh, instantly kill them. So that's an option, but it's still going to be very similar mid-game. You're going to be jumping on the back line, trying to play, apply as much pressure as possible, using your sustain to your advantage in lane, um, and just kind of trying to be like a bully and stuff like that. So that's Fenrir at number four. Uh, number three, we're going to have Neja. So I think Neja also has a sustain on his three. It's going to be constantly up. Um, he gets random crits in the lane, which are really nice. It's going to give him a little bit of power play because no other soul laner can crit. Um, he has the easy ability to uh, proc his Warrior's Blessing with his Ring Bounce. The proc shot is going to help his damage when he builds tank. Um, he can buy a lot of time when he's getting ganked because he has the Sash for immunity. And he also has the ult that he can take somebody in the air. And then for like five seconds, he can wait for his jungler to come over. Um, so he has a lot of survivability. Uh, only problem with him is he doesn't really have a big escape unless you ult out. So sprint, I think, is a must on him and not really teleport any of those other actives. Maybe meditation on him, I could see. Um, so yeah, those are just some of the strengths. He's always going to do damage in the fights uh, as a tank, is, uh, even just because of the proch head on his one. So uh, the build's going to be the same. Just the uh, boots one, Warrior's Blessing build with the chalice. And like I said before, I really like sprint on him because... It's not even called sprint, isn't it? It's called heavenly. Um, I really like heavenly on him because... He doesn't have that escape, no s slow immunity, so if he just sprints away and gets out, it's going to be really helpful. And it buys him a lot of time so that he can get his cooldowns back on his 2 and his 1, which are going to help him survive as well, and even his 3. So uh, it's going to be a similar build to before. I like Breastplate. The only difference I'm going to have here and steer away from the other build with Genji's build is I'm going to go Runic Shield instead on Asia. CDR is still good on Asia, and you could go Genji's, and it would just be fine. But I like going the 35 physical power item, Runic Shield. It's also going to reduce a lot of their magical damage. But it's especially good on Neja because it helps his clear a lot because of his hit chain. It's going to increase his damage a lot on that. Um, the power is going to help with the damage on his ult. He's still going to do a lot of damage to the carries with that. Um, so I think it's just a good item on him in general. Um, and then plus the prot shred is going to help this this power actually come through. And then I'm going to be going at pretty normal from there, McGuardian. Um, if you feel like you're tanky enough at this point, you could go Void Shield here. And you're, you're going to be doing a lot of damage. You're pretty tanky with this build even. Um, so I would go something like this. However, like I said before, it just feels so much better to go Masamune here if you want a damage item, like a bruiser item. And then just sell boots for either Witchblade or Wingblade late game. Um, if you have the sprint, then you may not need the, need the Wingblade, but you already get a lot of physical power from these two items. Plus you're going to have FG around this time if you're ahead. Uh, you're going to have a 500 pot if you're behind. So you're going to be around 100 physical power. You're still going to be doing a good amount of damage and being super tanky and really hard to kill. So that's why I like going Wingblade here because it just makes it really hard to lock down Asia. Uh, but you could also go the Witchblade. And then all those situational items like we talked about before, um, Nemean, Mantle, Bulwark, uh, stuff like that. Stone of Gaia is something I haven't talked about yet, but Stone of Gaia is still an option. If they have a lot of sustain on their team and you want to match them in that sustain, I think Stone of Gaia is still a really viable option. Um, so yeah, that would be the full build. 
Um, usually around this time, you want the height of the urchin fully stacked. And also late game, you probably want to sell your uh, your runic shield for like a bulwark of hope. Um, uh, just because runic shield falls off a little bit late, late game because 50 magical power isn't going to be uh, that much in the grand scheme of things when people have like 800, 900 magical power. Um, so you want a bulwark to make sure you get that extra shield and that uh, good amount of health. So, and then all the situations like we talked about before. So, Nija is going to be the play style. is going to be basically, um, you're going to be being super annoying in fights. Very, very hard to lock down and kill. You're going to do lots of damage. If you can ult their carries, that's really good. It's going to set up for your jungler to one-shot them. Um, but sometimes you can play with your backline a little bit as well. Um, keep them slowed. It just be constantly annoying, but just basically be sashing on cooldown, being super annoying, and being super aggro, and sometimes diving that backline, uh, and using your sustain to your advantage because you know the 20 stacks Nasia is gonna be really nice. Um, and you think I think the bulk of Nasia's damage really is auto attacking in fight since he's so hard to actually kill. Just constantly be using your two for your attack steroid and just auto attacking in the fight, and you're actually gonna do a lot of damage and get random crits, and it's gonna maybe even win you a one v one or even a fight in general. So Nija is at number three. Coming at number two, I think is Kamazots. I still think Kamazots is viable in solo. I think the meta shifted a little bit, um, and it's not as much like we want a pure damage from our solo laner. We kind of want utility and stuff like that. So that's why he's not as viable as he was before. But I still think of the assassins, he is still one of the best. Um, normal build, Warrior's Blessing, um, Boots. He has everything he had that he had before. Basically, crazy sustain, crazy damage, crazy bully potential. Um, really hard to lock down in fights because his ult, he can just remain in the air forever. Um, but he also can just easily 1v1 anyone, especially as a tank. Um, you could go teleport on him. I also like going blink on him because blink thorns is really nice to have on him uh, when you're building full tank. There's some other options like meditation, really double down on your sustain. Make sure it's impossible for you to ever lose any health, really. Um, sprint's always also always an option so um, something like that we'll just throw a blink in here for now uh, blink thorn is really nice on him the build is basically gonna be the exact same breastplate um, I like runic shoot on him because I think going a little bit more uh, power early on is gonna give you a lot more in the long run uh, you're gonna be able to 1v1 really easily clear is gonna be crazy um, you have the AoE hit on your third hit so it's gonna help your clear a lot as far as like jungle and stuff like that um, and also it's just good magic good cheap magical defense but also not costing you any like damage or bruiser potential so that's why I like going arenic shield on like him and Nasia. Uh, high of the Urchin next this is a buff high of the Urchin uh, really good item now in my opinion then I'd probably go mid guardian and then late game I might do the same thing where I go Masamune here and then sell this for like a witchblade probably witchblade on uh Kamazot, since you're going to be on their ADC a lot of the time so witchblade is just a little bit better Nasia, you're not always on their ADC excuse me, their ADC, so Wingblade may be better in that uh, case. And also it just makes it really hard for Nasia to lock down. Um, and then sell this for the Bulwark late game. I prefer to go to full tank build on Kamazots. I don't think you need that Transcendence kind of build on him. Uh, I think he's just as good as a full tank as any other character. He gets the physical power from his one, so he's going to be doing a lot of damage in fights anyway. Um, so that would be the full build. Um... And yeah, and then there's a situational items that we talked about before, and you could always go. It just depends on what's going on, but this is like the core of the build. Um, that's why I keep mentioning it, because there are the situational items. It just depends on what their team comp is, what your team comp is, what you need. Um, and remember, always keep in mind that you should go Pestilence if they have a lot of sustain. Um, that's kind of a given, though. Make sure that you're always keeping that in the back of your head. So we're at 3,100 health with this build, which I really like. I just like this build in general because it, it's so smooth. You get the Moss Mini last item, which is like a nice bruiser item that's really good late game because you're going to be in the middle of five people, so you're getting these protections from the passive, um, the 35 protections. Um, and then there's also uh, the viability that you can sell your boots and get like a utility item instead of having to have the boots because the boots are a really good item from early to mid, but come late game, it kind of drops off as far as like physical power. Uh, movement speed is still going to be nice, but if you can get a movement speed item like Witchblade, then you can, you know, patch that right up. So that's Kamazots coming in number two. His play style, like I said before, going on their backline almost always. You're going to be diving the backline almost always because you have no CC besides some slows on Kamazots. You have a ton of sustain. You have a lot of ways to survive while you're diving the backline, and you have a lot of ways to kill their backline because you have so much damage. Um, every single one of your abilities does damage. So that's Kamazots coming in number two. And coming in number one, and this might be a little bit biased um, because it's just my favorite character, and I've been playing him a lot lately, and I just love him in solo, 
is going to be Thor. I've been really enjoying Thor and Solo lately. I think he got a lot more viable with his change to his uh, one to do 80% damage on the backswing of the hammer. Um, so I'm going to be going Warrior's Blessing on him. Slain just finding me, but I'm not trying to make a video. <laughs> um, so it's going to be just like before. Warrior's Blessing, Boots, Chalice. Um, could go Teleport on him, except I've been really liking Meditation on him. Um, doesn't have the sustain that other people have, so I do think you need to cover up that little bit of a problem with Meditation. Allows him to sustain and lane really well. Um, so yeah, I think part of the reason he's so viable in solo is that he has so much rotational ability. Similar to Ratatasker, he's a little bit safer. Uh, he's clearing the wave really well. Uh, he's proccing his Warrior's Blessing really easily. He has the 1v1 potential. He does so much damage. If you know how to hit your double taps consistently, you know how to stay alive as Thor, make sure you're using your, your hammers smart uh, in an intelligent way and stuff like that, then I think you can do really well on Thor solo. And I think he is, I think he is number one because he has some of the highest potential for sure. Um, so his build is going to be the only little bit different build, although you could go the normal Breastplate build into Genji's. I think this is a perfectly fine build on him. However, I've been really liking the Mystical Male build on him just because you're in the middle of everyone almost always. Um, when you dunk somebody, you're going to be getting those Mystical Male procs. The health is really nice. It uh, helps with the clear a little bit as well because a lot of times when you hammer, even though uh, the buffed hammer does full clear the archers, it doesn't always full clear the front minions. So you just have to auto those down. And you don't want to always use your Berserker Barrage because you're going to be wasting mana and a uh, cooldown on that, on those front minions that are already kind of low. So Mystical Male is going to help you do that. And then I would be going into Hide of the Urchin. Pestilence, of course, here if they have uh, healing. Uh, but if you are going to go Pestilence, then I recommend probably going Breastplate instead. Like if you know they have a lot of sustain, then I would go Breastplate instead. That way you don't lose it on CDR because I do think CDR is good on him. And also you don't want to lose it on that mana sustain because you'll run out of mana very fast if you have Mystical here instead of Breastplate. Um, but usually, or at least hopefully, you'd be able to go the uh, Greedy build um, of Mystical Mail into Genji's. And to basically, it kind of gets a little weird from here. Whatever you really want. Um, the Guardian's kind of a must. Uh, last item is kind of whatever you want it to be, though. Uh, I usually like going a Bruiser item here, like Void Shield. Uh, I think Void Shield is definitely a viable option here. And then Masamune is always the, the viable option as well, because then you can go uh, Masamune. And then you can sell this for Witchblade, like before. Um, I also like going just regular boots on him and going last item, Stone of Gaia. Uh, it's going to be really hard to kill him because he's already so hard to kill because he can just hammer away. He has his ult to get away from things. He has a lot of self peel with his uh, wall and stuff like that. Uh, but he doesn't have to sustain in his kit. So just really cover up the problem that he has no sustain with Stone of Gaia and stuff like Meditation. Um, and then your second relic. I didn't really talk about the second relic for all of them, but uh, it's either going to be Thorns or Sprint or Shell, basically. Um, Shell is really good to help with your team, and then you upgrade that. The, the two consumed autos is really good. Um, really good peel. It's basically a shell, sprint, or thorns. Sometimes horrific if they have like um, some characters that have a lot of auto attacks, auto attack base, you can go horrific and it'll really help with that. And the upgrade from that is always going to be useful in fights. So that's why I didn't really talk about the, the relic, the second relic choice too much. And then blink, of course, if you're not Thor, you don't really want blink on Thor, but blink on some characters. Um, and then all those situational items like we talked about before. If you're going thorns on uh, Thor, which I think is still good because you know you're going to be diving that back line super hard. The Nemean's an option, and then all the other items we talked about before, like Bulwark and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I really like Thor in solo right now. I th do think he has the highest potential, and that's why I have him at number one. And also I'm a little bit biased because I love the character so much, and he's really fun to play. And I think he has, his skill ceiling is so high. Um, so yeah, his play style is going to be very similar to Kamazot's um, in some ways, but a little bit different in other ways. Um, he's going to be diving the back lane a lot of the time, but he also can peel for his front line and isolate characters really well. He can isolate frontline really well with his wall. If they can't get out of it, then use that wall and get a free pick on that. Um, he has a lot of rotational ability, a lot, of, a lot of ways to proxy and stay safe because of his ult. So look to proxy on him often. Look to pressure back cans and stuff like that because, like I said, you're in a really safe spot with your ult. No w real way for them to ever kill you when you're building tank. So just kind of be doing whatever you want, uh, farming consistently, kind of be in their jungle at all points and looking for rotations to mid lane in the mid game you know rotate over like proxy wave rotate over ult to the mid lane and kill the mid laner because a lot of mid laners can't get out from your wall and stuff like that um and then late game you know be as tank you know just be as annoying as possible because you're so tanky use your wall to isolate people you're still going to do lots of damage your double tap is still going to do crazy damage to their carries late game so be looking to poke on phoenixes and stuff like that 
Um, so yeah, that's basically his play style. Um, so yeah, that's Thor at number one. So it's going to be Thor number one, um, Kamazot's number two, Nejan number three, Fenrir at number four, and Ratatasker at number five. So those are your top five assassin solos right now, in my opinion, in this meta. Um, a little bit biased, like I said, but I still think it's pretty accurate. So try out these characters. Um, go these builds. Try the play styles like I talked about. Kind of stick with those, and I think you'll do well and actually end up having a lot of fun because a lot of these characters are really fun right now. And so, so yeah, appreciate you guys watching the video. If you like it, if you like watching solo videos, if you like watching Smite in general and learning about the game from a pro player, then give me a like, uh, give me a subscription, and all that kind of good stuff. I'd really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, that's going to be it. So I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.